Okay, so this is the Junior Cert Higher Level Maths 2022, questions 10, 11 and 12. Now, Ali and John took part in a triathlon. In the triathlon, they had to complete a five, mil a five kilometer kayak, so that's this part here, uh, out of five kilometers, 25 kilometer cycle, so that's from here out to 30, and then a 10 kilometer run, so that's from 30 to 40 here. Uh, the diagram below was drawn after both of them had finished the race. It shows how many minutes more than John or less than John it took Ali to travel D kilometres in the triathlon where D is between 0 and 40. For example, the point A shows that it took Ali one minute more than John to travel the first 10 kilometres. So this is the point A here and you can see uh, 10 kilometres out to here and uh, Ali has taken one minute, this is one minute here, more than John at this point in the race. Okay, so let's have a look at the questions then. Did Ali finish the kayak section ahead of John, behind John, or at the same time as John? Tick one of the boxes below. So the this is the kayak section here, and this is Ali's race here, if you like. So Ali took two minutes longer than John. It took Ali two minutes longer than John at this point of the race after five kilometers. So it is, he is behind John at this stage. Ali is behind John at this stage by two minutes. Okay, next section. Ali had to stop briefly during the triathlon. John did not stop. State what distance Ali had traveled when he stopped and for how long he was stopped. Okay, so this is where Ali actually stopped here. And it's at 25 kilometers. So you've got to put 25 kilometers in here. How long did he actually stop for? Well, it's, uh, let's see, one and a half minutes. So that's one minute from here to here, and this is half a minute. So it's one and a half minutes. Okay. So let's look at the next question then. What was happening, John and Ali, at the point B marked on the diagram? So at the point B here, they were both kind of side by side in the cycle. They were cycling together at this particular point. So let's just write that out. So I'm saying here that at point B, both are at the same position in the in the race. They are cycling side by side at this particular point. But it looks like Ali is is uh, speeding up and is actually going to overtake John at this particular point. But at that particular point, at B, they're actually side by side. The table below shows the time it took John to complete each of the three sections in the triathlon, as well as the total time for the triathlon. Using the diagram, fill in the four missing times for Ali. Okay, so let's have a look at the kayak section first. So if we look at the kayak section here, we can see that after five kilometers, the end of the kayak section, Ali is two minutes behind John. So it has taken Ali two minutes more than John. So that means this is going to be 34. Now let's have a look at the cycle then. So if we look at the cycle, we can see that Ali is two minutes behind uh, John, but finishes the cycle one minute ahead. That means Ali must have cycled three minutes faster th uh, over this section than John. Going from two minutes behind to one minute ahead, that's three minutes in total faster than John. So that would just give us uh, 35 here. Now the run then is the last section, so let's have a look at the run. Okay, so during the run section, um, Ali was one, one minute ahead of John and finished one minute ahead of John. 
so therefore john and ali both took the same time to complete the run section of the triathlon so that's not going to change so this is going to be 36 okay so let's add those three together you get six and five eleven five three four five six seven eight and ten one oh five so they that's um the three times and the total time as well john and ali also ran a 400 meter race john's average speed for the 400 meters was 7.8 meters per second let me just write that down so the john's average speed so speed was 7.8 meters per second the distance is 400 meters now it took Ali two seconds more than John to run the 400 meters work out Ali's average speed okay so in order to do this we know we need to know uh, the time it took John to run the 400 meters so let's do that well we know that speed is distance over time so that gives us time is equal to distance over speed and in this particular case, in John's case, time is going to be the distance, which is 400. We've got to divide that by his speed, which is 7.8. That gives John a time of 51.282051 and so on seconds. So now we've got to look at Ali. Ali takes two seconds longer, two seconds more. So that means Ali's time is going to be 50. 3.282051 and so on seconds. The distance is also of course 400 meters so therefore Ali's speed, average speed in this case again is distance over time so it's 400 divided by 53.282051 and so on and that gives us finally 7.5072 and this is meters per second now we need to do this to one decimal place so that's going to be 7.5 meters per second that's our answer there okay so that's it for question 10 let's have a look at question 11 the line H has a slope of 4, so this is our line H here, slope of 4, passes through the point 2012. Find the coordinates of another point on the line H other than 2012. Show your working out. Okay, so we've got to actually show what we're doing here. What I'm going to do to solve this is to find the equation of the line. So I have the slope, I have a point, so I'm going to say y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 so it's going to be y minus 12 is equal to 4 into x minus 20 so that'll give me y minus 12 is equal to 4x minus 80 let's put it in the form y is equal to mx plus c y equals 4x and then minus 80 plus 12 that's going to be minus 68 okay so is to find a point find another point on this line so we can just pick any x, any y, uh, slot them in here and that'll give us a point. So let's say we'll do an easy one. Let's say y is equal to zero. So really what we're doing here is just trying to find uh, this point down here, this one down here. So let's do that. We've got y is equal to zero. That'll give me zero is equal to 4x minus 68. That'll give me 4x is equal to 68 x is equal to let's see 4 uh, 1 28 4 7 is 28 so the point then is going to be 17 0 so this point down here is going to be 17 0 and that's another point on the line we could let x equal to 0 either that's fine maybe that's easier that would give us y is equal to minus 68 so it would be um, 0 minus 68 would be another point but we have one here so that's fine so let's just put that in. So we have 17, 0. So you may have gotten different points, you know, um, everyone's not going to get the same answer here necessarily. Okay, so that's actually all of question 11. So this is the last one then, question 12. 
uh, let's see, we have a diagram below which shows a circle K which is not to scale. The points A, B and C lie on the circle. A, B is the diameter of the circle and A, C is 8. Uh, the area of the circle is 25 pi centimeters squared work out the size of the smallest angle in the triangle ABC. So, okay, so we're told this is not the scale, so just because this angle looks smaller doesn't necessarily mean that it is. Could be this one here. We don't know the length of this side here, because as I say, it's not to scale. So um, what I'm going to do here, they give us an extra bit of information here. They give us the area of the circle. So from the area of the circle, we should be able to work out the radius. All I've got to do is double it then to find this side here. From that, we can find this side here. Uh, and what we're really looking for here is the smallest side because one of the theorems that you should have learned was that the angle opposite the smallest side is the is the smallest angle and the converse is true as well. So let's work through that then. So the first thing I'm going to do is just have a look at um, the area. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. We know that the area is 25 pi, so that's pi r squared. The pi's here will cancel. You just divide across by pi, and you get r squared is equal to 25. That gives you r is equal to 5. Okay, and that's centimeters. So that means that this distance here must be 10 centimeters. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is just do Pythagoras' theorem. Why can I do Pythagoras' theorem here? Because another theorem that you learned said that an angle in a semicircle is a right angle, and we have an angle in a semicircle here because this is a diameter. So this must be a right angle triangle here. Okay, so let's do that then. So we have 8 squared plus the distance BC squared is equal to 10 squared. So the distance BC squared is equal to 100 minus 8864. That gives me the distance BC squared is equal to 36. And that will give me BC then. The distance from B to C will be 6. So, okay, this is 6 centimeters here. That is the smallest uh, side. So this, this is the angle here that we need to find out, okay? We need to find out what that angle there is. We'll call it theta. Okay, that's the angle opposite the smallest side. So let's do that then. Now we can, there are a few ways of doing this. So I'm just going to use, let's see, we can use um, sine, cos, or tan here. Let's use, I don't know, let's use tan. Okay, so the tan of, we call it theta here, is going to be equal to the opposite, which is 6, over the adjacent, which is 8. So that means theta then, or our angle then, is going to be equal to tan inverse of 6 over 8. Okay, so our angle then is tan inverse 6 over 8, which is 36, 36.8698 degrees. It goes on for a while. So we need to give our answer, work out the size of the smallest angle in the triangle ABC. So it doesn't actually say, which is unusual, that we need to round it. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? So my answer then is, so my answer, the angle BAC is equal to 36.86 and so on degrees. This is the smallest angle. Okay, so that's it for this question and indeed the junior cert as well.